Hello there folks, Robin Nichols here talking to you today about how to become an artist. Now if you've dabbled with Photoshop or Lightroom or Photoshop Elements or even PaintShop Pro you'll know that uh, it has a number of RT filters in it. We have an oil painting filter, we have a cutout filter, we have a number of brush based filters and all these things are there to design, they're designed uh, to try and make your picture look like it's been handmade I suppose. Uh, let me just show you the best way to do this and ironically Photoshop is not the best tool. I've discovered and have been using a tool here called Dynamic Auto Painter for a number of years uh, and love it to bits because it seems to do a far far better job than Photoshop. Uh, or at least um, I think possibly you can do or you can simulate what this program will do in Photoshop but it just takes an awful long time to do it and we all a little bit of a hurry, we want to get it open done with fairly quickly. Let me show you briefly how this uh, this version works. So this is available for PC, I think it costs about 70 US dollars last time I looked. There is a cut down version available for Mac which costs about 5 or 6 or 10 dollars. Uh, the main difference between them is you have an awful lot of bells and whistles to fiddle with in this version. The Mac version just offers four variations. They're pretty good uh, but you don't have for example the range of uh, famous artists styles to copy you have four uh, and from memory it's uh, Cezanne it is uh, this guy called Benson here who was uh, very good Frank Benson um, and there is a, a couple more I can't remember the names anyway um, but the Benson one is very very good uh, so we may try Benson one on these girls here so I took a photograph in Bali a number of years ago this was uh, just a standard um, sort of everyday uh, festival uh, and a lot of ladies sort of turning up at a temple and they've got their offerings and their doodads on their heads and so it was a rather nice little thing I climbed up a I think a step ladder or something to get a slightly higher angle to see uh, what was going on here I subsequently actually made a book out of this um, uh, which was like a self-published book which are, are really nice and I applied this artistic filter to all of them so we choose an artist it could be Cezanne it could be Benson it could be what have you or a style like aquarelle planes uh, chalk um, Van Gogh uh, anyway it's something like that so I'm going to choose Mr. Benson uh, then we choose the range of um, palettes, range of colors in the palette um, and we could just use the default which is pretty much the range of colors in um, in Frank Benson's palette um, and it reflects these solid colors we have these these ladies here um, you could go grayscale or you could ramp it up and go much brighter with the impressionistic palette I'm gonna stick with the default then you can decide whether you want to have expressive or realistic um, essentially expressive is a lot more sort of airy fairy brush strokes realistic is a little bit more well realistic dry or wet that's just the way the paint goes onto the canvas use your imagination here it's not canvas it's all electrons but it kind of means um, it means something um, moving down the list on the left hand side we can choose the maximum brush size and again you can restrict it to you know half the size if you want uh, more detail the smaller the brush sizes that you use the more detail the more realistic or the more faithful it looks compared to the original um, and uh, we can uh, add a little bit of an outline around the edges of the brush strokes or not we can then say look how big are we going to pump it out at the end I think I'm gonna make it I'm just gonna make it 10 megapixels or something like that uh, clear the canvas on the start is really good because otherwise it looks like you're painting by numbers and what it does we start with a blank canvas um, and you want to simulate for example real canvas probably yes I'm gonna go with that and we'll have natural borders do we want the painting operation to be impressionistic or faithful I'm going to leave it in the middle real or surreal let's just leave it in the middle um, and do we want to have in terms of the detail brushes more time or less time I'm going to leave it in the middle so there are dozens of things that you can choose here including these tabs here like what sort of canvas what sort of lighting do you have on the canvas i.e. do you want the canvas effect to be really 3d or not as you can see all these things here I'm going to skip over these we're just dealing with the main window here now how do we get it to go well what we need to do is very simply as I pull this down the screen we've got the start and stop button so let's click on the start button there is actually a, a start button up the top here as well the idea behind this program is this it analyzes the colors that you have here and you can see it says it's preparing the set and I'm just going to expand it on the screen so that we can just see this happening it's counting the brush strokes on the right hand side Benson 400 500 etc and it's analyzed the components basically the sort of rough outlines of the figures and you can see um, you can see some of the faces the back of their heads the back of their backs some of these square baskets that they've got beginning to take shape and if we watch on the left hand side 
you can see it actually should give you feedback. In fact, we're using these two brushes here, which are highlighted the, I don't know what you call that, a sort of pointy brush and a flat-headed brush at the moment. So the big brushes. Um, and the beauty of this little program is, if you get to about this place, oh, wow, that's fantastic, you just click the stop button and save it. Or you can think, well, it's not really doing much for me. I can't really see what's going on. I'm just going to carry on a little bit longer. And then, oh, now we're using the very small brushes. So now if I just slide this on the screen, you can see the tiny little brushes. So this is where it begins to put in more detail. The picture, I suppose, begins to appear a little bit sharper. It's not really sharper, but it puts in more detail. And you can see tiny little details on the baskets begin to appear. Um, they do recommend, I think they recommend waiting for at least 10,000 uh, brush strokes. But you can leave this running overnight if you want to do this. Generally, it's going to do it in about 5, 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes. I have walked away from it a couple of times and let it just run. So the user input on this tool, on this program, is beforehand. Once it kicks off, you basically have to look at it and go, yeah, well, that's sort of okay. Mm, yeah, kind of like that. What I do is this. I'm going to say, now that we've been going for about six minutes, I'm going to say, fantastic, stop. Okay, so we've stopped it. I'm going to just choose from the file menu. If I show you the file menu, here we go. I'm just going to save it. I'm just going to call it test, like that, and stick it on the desktop. There we go. It goes on the desktop. You will notice um, when we're choosing, for example, you know, one of these, one of these uh, painters, you have the most amazing range of styles to choose from. But um, just before I jump out of this, just have a look at the amazing effect that it. I mean, to me, that does look like um, a lot more like somebody's actually painted it. You can see this lady's head here. She's looking away from me. She's got the basket on her head. You can see uh, uh, the hair grip in her hair, the black hair. You know, it's an amazing, amazing uh, result. Seems we've just switched it on and just tried it out. Okay, what can we do? We can, uh, for example, uh, what have we done? We just saved it. I'm going to now import this into Photoshop. I'll import into Photoshop and we'll go to stage two. Okay, so here we are at stage two. Uh, we're in Photoshop and I have the original picture and the painted picture. So there are a couple of things we can do here. The first is I'm going to combine these two pictures. So I'm going to select Control or Command A. I'm going to Control or Command C, copy, and then I'm going to go to the original picture and Control or Command V to paste it. Why is it coming small? Well, um, the original is 60 megabytes, and the RT version I made is only 10, I think. You know, and I'd, you can of course make it much bigger so that it fits perfectly. But I made it a little bit smaller just because it's faster for the demonstration. So I'm just going to transform this back up to pretty much the same size as the original. Doesn't really matter that we're interpolating or resampling. Yes, you're going to lose quality, but we made it a very fuzzy image anyway, so we don't really care too much. I'm going to bring the layer palette into play here. Um, and just for the sense of um, sort of realism, I'm going to just turn it off and on. You can see that's not bad. It's not bad. It has distorted it a little bit. Uh, but what I can do is this. I can then take the eraser brush, just the standard eraser brush, with a nice big soft fuzzy brush tip, something like this, and I'll set the eraser brush opacity to about 20%. And then I'm going to erase on this, this lady's face. So I'm cutting a hole in the RT layer here. See, I'm just cutting a hole. So I'm basically destroying those pixels. And what it does, if we have, if Robin has got this picture aligned correctly underneath, it is going to reveal this woman's face underneath. It's probably not the best example because she's got glasses on and it looks a bit weird. So let's have a look at, for example, this wonderful basket here. And there's a little bit of movement in the basket, so that's pretty cool. So we're going to have a look at the basket. There it is. So if I just erase this, you can see I'm just erasing and revealing the basket underneath. A little bit more detail comes through, even on this lady's hair here, maybe. We can do that. Let's turn it off and have a look. So you can see that's pretty cool. It's showing a little bit more detail coming through. You can just erase a bit more. Just enough. And so that's almost like a photograph there, surrounded by the painterly effect. And you can spend 15, 20, 30 minutes just painting in little extra details. So you can think, oh, you know, is this really a painting or is this a photo? Combine the two. Now when we've finished, we need to uh, zip it up, we need to flatten it. So I'm not going to spend any more time, I've just flattened it as you can see here, it's Control or Command E, or we go to the Layer menu, Whoop, there's the Layer menu, and we choose Flatten Image, so it just flattens it, squashes it down. You know, you don't have to flatten it, but it's, it's kind, of, kind of easier. Uh, when we've applied such a massive painting effect on an image like this, we probably then have to add a little bit of contrast back into it, or a little bit of brightness indeed, something of that nature. 
Okay. In fact, that's probably just ruined it. No, that's, that's okay. But the last stage is to fuzz up the edges because the edges in any photo give it away. Because it's rectangular, you think, oh, why is it rectangular? Paintings aren't rectangular. I know they're stretched over rectangular canvases, but in fact you'll find that um, they're usually a bit rough around the edges. They may be taped down if they're watercolours, they're taped onto a board, but when you tear the tape off, there's always a raggedy edge. So it's important to get a raggedy edge. Let's show you how to do that. Now I have here um, a bunch of masks. It's no big deal, they're just rectangular documents with some black paint that's splattered on them. I downloaded these from one of those CDs that comes stuck to technology magazines, I think it was a photography magazine actually, probably 10 years ago. Um, and on that magazine um, they were giving away tutorials, but one of the freebie giveaways was a bunch of these black and white masks. No big deal. Um, you can actually surf the internet and find these to download. They don't have to be really big resolution, they can probably be um, something like HD resolution, something like a thousand or 1500 pixel long uh, because we're going to use them as just as masking. Uh, you can also make them, you can actually physically get a piece of white paper, get a felt pen and just scribble something on them and photograph them and then you just all you need is a black and white picture. I'm going to choose border number 18 because it's got this nice crease all the way through the middle and I'm just going to open it. Okay so you think well what the heck is going on here? This is a bit of magic. I'm going to select the entire document, Control or Command A, I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to close it down and I'm going to paste it on top of this photo. You think, gee whiz, that's very good Robin. I need to rotate it actually, so I'm going to rotate it uh, counterclockwise, just tip it on its back and say OK. Because this is a mask, I don't care one iota if I, you know, if it's got a rough edge. The whole point is creating a rough edge. So I need, uh, and in fact I need to put the snap on, so I need it to sit in the corner like that and then with Control or Command T, I'm just going to stretch it. So it's going to stretch it out of proportion, really, covers the entire image, and press OK. So now I've covered up my beautiful Balinese ladies with this black and white mask. The idea being is then we change the blending mode on the black and white mask. So we make the black areas go transparent as if it's a window, and the white areas become opaque. And we do that using a blend mode called Screen. It's a very unusual blend mode because, as far as I know, it's not really used for anything else. But you choose screen and the whole thing just goes wallop and goes in reverse. So I'll do that again. We'll go back to normal. The black goes transparent, the white becomes opaque, like a mask. So in screen mode, bingo. So now you can see we've got a document that has all these creases in it. Works quite nicely. Let's zoom in. So we've not only applied a nice arty effect to it, it actually looks as though it's a piece of canvas. The final event in this chapter to make your deception 100% I suppose is to do this, is to print it onto watercolour paper. And there are some fine inkjet watercolour uh, papers around from Canson, from Arch, Epson make a really nice radiant white watercolour paper. Print it onto watercolour paper or print it onto canvas in order to give a physical texture to it and I think you'll end up with something that looks a lot neater and a lot more genuine as a handmade or painted or etched or sketched or scribbled or crayoned piece of artwork rather than something that goes through uh, Photoshop's filter system. Photoshop's filter system is okay but it certainly isn't as good as this digital dynamic auto painter.